Hey everyone, welcome back to another Iron Man from Scratch video. We've been smashing the skilling and money making grinds as of late, so it's about time to resume the quest grind and unlock some more content. We have our protection prayers and now we need some more gear for our arsenal, starting with the Iban Staff. One of the most useful early to mid game weapons, especially on an Iron Man, it requires a trek through the infamous underground pass to unlock, but it's well worth it. As usual, we'll knock out a few other quests and diaries in parallel alongside a sprinkle of skilling. Let's get cracking. Speaking of building up the arsenal, what's one of your favourite weapons or pieces of gear in RuneScape? Let me know in the comments below. The sound of an abyssal whip cracking never gets old to me. So in the background over the past week or so I've been working on collecting some stardust from the shooting stars. The shooting stars are effectively like a random event, random in the sense that they can appear anywhere on the world map but they appear pretty much every 2 hours or so and they can be scouted out from the player owned house using a telescope. Fortunately, like most things in RuneScape, for the lazy players like me, there's a lot of awesome communities out there who go around and scout out the stars for other players. The Star Miners Discord is probably the most well-known one, and the OSRS Portal website I mentioned previously for the Mahogany Homes also has an active tracker which links back to the Star Miners Discord, so you can visit their website and see where the stars are spawning around the game. I'll leave a link in the description below. Shooting stars are actually a really good way to AFK mining if you want something very very AFK to just do on the side. They're not exactly the fastest XP but it requires very minimal attention. I won't go into the details of all the mechanics and that, you can read up on the wiki if you're interested, but if you find most moderate to large size stars, they'll last at a bare minimum 9 minutes regardless of the players mining it and oftentimes they'll last longer if you don't have a full group around. However, we're not really here for the XP, although it is nice to get it on the side. What we're actually after is a couple of the rewards that you can get from the shop. It's a pretty small shop, there's only 4 things available. The most useful one, and the one that we're after, is the Celestial Ring. When charged, the ring has a chance to give you an additional ore mining rocks up to adamant, but more importantly, it gives you a plus 4 invisible mining boost regardless of charges. So we want to get this before we do any sort of serious mining grinds. The store sells soft clay packs as well, which makes it easy to gather in bulk rather than having to go and mine it normally. <laughs> I'm actually surprised how many people are around here right now. It's one of those few activities in the game that still sort of brings a little group of people just randomly doing some activity. It's pretty cool. There's 51 mining. Shooting stars are actually the perfect activity as well for raising kitten since you're just standing around in the one spot AFK for so long. Good thing I remembered to grab my kitten before going through the whole grind. You know what else shooting stars are good for? Making wishes. And I wish for good RNG for all of you and a like on this video for me. It really helps me out and it's greatly appreciated. And that's 57 mining. So if you're paying attention, you may have noticed I just jumped 6 levels and about 5,000 stardust. That's because I was pretty much doing this all day on the side while working from home, so it's uh, definitely a good activity for the side hustle. It's definitely an activity I'll be coming back to in the future, especially when we need to gather some soft clay. Anyway, we've got more than enough stardust to buy what we need, so we'll finish up this particular star and then go buy some goodies. So the shop is just at the entrance to the mining guild behind Falador East Bank. We'll grab one of these, thank you very much. Oh, I <laughs> forgot, that's a collection log as well, very nice. We haven't got one of those for a while, I don't think. Okay, 150 Stardust each. We'll just buy enough to fill up our inventory for now. We're not going to need too much more anyway. We can always come back and grab them in the future. Rightio, that's our Shooting Star adventure complete. And now it's time to tackle the infamous Underground Pass. <laughs> oh, please have mercy on me. For those of you who aren't aware, the Underground Pass is a quest and also a dungeon of the same name. The reason it's so infamous is because there's a whole bunch of agility obstacles and failing them can do a fair bit of damage and it also resets your progress at quite a few points so it can take a long time to finish if you're just very unlucky. Obviously the higher your agility the better it is, we're kind of at a mid-level agility so not ideal but <laughs> fingers crossed let's see how we go. Well, <laughs> not a good start and that's not even one of the agility ones, that's just picking the wrong path. So this is literally trial and error, there's no secret to it, not much else we can do, and at the moment it's uh, quite a bit of error more than anything else. Okay, we finally got there. I think for the first step, it was literally the last one that I tried, but then after that we got through pretty quickly, so it all worked out in the end. Okay, that's the last of the knights killed, it's on to the difficult bit. Man, this path just goes on and on and on, it's, <laughs> it's terrifying to think about. Uh, let's just hope, let's just hope luck is on our side today. <laughs> at least one nice thing about this quest is that most of the enemies are safe spottable, so at least we can conserve some supplies through the fights. Well, what do you know? Maybe I was getting worried about nothing. So far, luck seems to be on our side. We've killed all three demons and got to the chest without falling down once, so good start. Fingers crossed it holds on. We've made it all the way to the Solus and still no hiccups. Ah, ah, uh, okay, here we go. It's going to begin now on the home stretch, isn't it? That's one fall. And number two. 
<laughs> oh, it was saving itself to the end. That's number three. We were so close. Oh, okay. We did it. We did it. Okay, three falls. That's not too bad. We just got to grab the robes, make sure we don't mess up the final bit, throwing the doll into the pot, and then we're good to go. Okay, that wasn't too bad in the end. We have done it. That is our Iben staff. Let's go hand in the quest. And that is underground pass complete. Another big one off our checklist. That's very, very nice to have under the belt. So about 27 minutes for that last section of the quest. Not too bad. An hour in total as well. <laughs> Oops, I uh, completely forgot about the attack requirement to wield the staff. <laughs> anyway, it's only one level away, so we can grab that pretty quickly. But for now, let's just run through quickly why we wanted this staff in the first place. Essentially, Iben's staff gives us access to the combat spell Iben Blast, which only requires 50 magic but can pump out 25 damage as a max hit. That 25 damage beats out any other of the standard combat spells that we have access to around this level. Even the Surge spells at 80 plus it beats, they only do the low 20s. And all that just for the low cost of 5 fire runes and 1 death rune, and a charge of the Iben staff, which is also free to recharge. Speaking of charges, typically the base staff only holds 120, but we can speak to the Dark Mage here and pay 200k to boost it all the way up to 2500 charges per refresh. And even better for us, because we got lucky with a Tome of Fire, the Fire Runes are free as well, so it's effectively just one Death Rune per cast. Now, strictly speaking, our Fire Blast can get pretty close with the Tome of Fire to 24 damage, and then the later Fire Spells will beat it. However, that requires using our Burnt Pages, which are a lot less accessible to get unless we want to grind Winter Todd, which I really don't want to grind any more of. So Ivan's Blast is by far and away the best magic damage we have access to for now and the foreseeable future, until we have more magic damage boosting items. Okay, so taking a break from the questing, those teak trees that we planted last episode are all grown up ready to harvest now. And that's a farming level off that one as well, very nice, 64 farming. So this is the best location to chop teaks and mahoganies to bank for construction, which is why we planted them previously. Now that they're all grown up, we're going to chop down a few more teak logs because we didn't quite get the construction levels that we wanted to last episode and we'll work on finishing that up today. Oh, hello King's Messenger. That's the prompt to start Regicide, I believe. I always like these little random things that RuneScape has added. Just brings a bit of life to the world. Okay, so I've chopped myself about 400 teak logs and already turned them into planks. So we'll go knock these out with Mahogany Homes in a little bit. Can't have an Iron Man from scratch video if we're not doing some birdhouse runs, and that is 56 Hunter as well. Just had to spend a bit of time doing some AFK work, so we're back at the old barbarian fishing and raising cats, and we've got ourselves 59 strength. As well as our first fishing level in a while, 87 fishing, closing in slowly but surely on that 99. And 59 agility as well, that was a pretty long but solid haul of fishing right there, but we can get back to the action now. That's 59 construction, so we're just going to rip back into the mahogany homes and knock out those teak planks that we made earlier. Not going to talk too much about the mahogany homes here today, we talked about it quite a bit in the previous video, so if you haven't seen that, there's a video card up on screen in the top corner, and otherwise I'm going to keep smashing these out. That is 60 construction, another skill into the 60s, the account's really starting to come along now. 61 construction. And 62 construction, that'll get us where we need to be. So we actually needed a few more steel bars to build all the bits and pieces in our house, and that got us 41 smithing, so that was just a little freebie level there. So the good thing about construction is there's actually quite a lot of ways to get permanent skill boosts to build more items in the house. One of those ways is to make a cup of tea, but to do so we're going to have to build a few things inside first. So first thing we're going to need is a larder, any type will do, but we're just going to make an oak one. We also need a range, any type will do, but I'm just going to build the fancy one, because why not? Then a set of shelves to grab the porcelain cup, and this one does matter. We need at least a wooden shelves 3, oak shelves 2, or teak shelves 1. We're going to go with the oak shelves in this case. And last but not least, a sink space. And again, doesn't matter which one, it's just got to be a water source. So all of that was just to get us a temporary boost. But to actually build the item we're after, we're going to need to grab ourselves one of these gold leaves, and that is a painful 150k. Everything in construction is so expensive. It takes more and more of these expensive resources to build what you need later on in the game. Okay, there's a whole process to making the tea here, so let's see if we can get it done right. First, from the shelves, we've got to grab ourselves the kettle, the teapot, and also the cup. So again, the type of cup will just depend on what level shelves you have. You can get a higher gold-trimmed cup, which will give you a plus three boost rather than plus two. Then from the larder, we're going to grab ourselves our tea leaves, fill up our kettle at the sink with some water, and then boil the kettle on the range, put our tea leaves into the teapot and then fill it up with the hot water and pour our tea into our cup and voila we have a nice hot fresh cup of tea. Okay so we want to build ourselves a study and now inside the study we're going to build a mahogany eagle lectern which requires 67 construction. 
So having a crystal saw in your inventory will give a plus three boost to anything that's built with the saw. And then having the cup of tea, this porcelain cup will give us another plus two. They will stack for a total of five boost, which will get us up to 67. We're at 62 currently. So we'll drink the tea and you can see we're up to 64. And then we can go in here and we should be able to build. Yep, there we go. Our mahogany eagle lectin. Knock that out. And perfect. We can now make Teletabs. So this particular tier of lectin is important because it lets us do the house Teletabs, which is what we really want. And especially when we get scrolls of redirect later on, they're very, very useful. The house teleports just give us an easy one-click teleport when we need it. And it's still our go-to for the Hesidious Farming patch, which is arguably our most important patch for now with the disease-free allotments. So I'm just going to quickly knock out a little starting stack of house teleport tabs. Not going to bother with the other spells. We can just use the spell book for now. Sweet, we've got a hundred odd tabs, that'll last us for a fair while. So I'm just making a quick trip down to the sand crabs. I figured we worked so hard to get that Ivan staff, we might as well get the level to equip it. So we'll knock that one level out real quick. And that is 50 attack. We can now wear our Ivan staff. That's a nice little power boost for the account. Bam, look at that. Kit it out with our Ivan staff. We're looking like a real solid mid-game Iron Man now. A nice haul and point to wrap up on, I think. As always, everyone, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like. It really helps me out. And subscribe if you want to follow along the journey. Previous episodes on screen. Until next time, have a good one, guys. See ya.